This once again is the 12th day of June 2024. Happy Democracy Day it is. And I'm joined by, I was thinking Boston was going to rest today being Democracy Day, you know. Uh, hmm. No kids going to school, spending time. With, but you know, every day is work day. The police specifically said they got wind that some people are planning to do violent protests in certain parts of the country. And they warned that anyone with such an intention should think again. They also asked all DIGs, the Inspector General said this, DIGs and uh, some senior officers have been put on alert um, in case anybody wants to turn a peaceful movement into a violent movement, they know what to do. That is, that is the message of the IGP. Peaceful movements and protests, no problem. If you want to change it to other things, they will change it for you, <laughs> legally. <laughs> That's on one side. And, um, uh, a few days ago, I was at the Boston Day. Yes. Um, the civilians who work in the Defense Ministry protested and blocked the gate of the Nigerian Defense Headquarters. That uh, of them have been beaten and killed by their military counterparts. In fact, there's a video on Twitter, now known as X, everywhere, where it is seen, shown that um, an army officer was beating his, uh, a teacher or an official, an officer of the commanding school, Yanopaja in Lagos. It is everywhere now. So that is brutality on that level. But these are some of the issues on Paul that are before us. Apart from that, the president gave a broadcast that Nigerians should keep tightening their belts, that um, things will turn out for good very soon, as you also predicted. So what is the position on this issue? Well, let me start from the last one you said yes. on, on security breach today. Is it basically what the president said, tighten your belt, things will turn out for good. Tighten your belt out, really, things is going to turn out for good. That I am a believer of. I'm a believer of that. I believe the president, the who led federal administration, will do well. Okay. And uh, but that is because uh, I have this confidence that at this point in time, Tinubu was what uh, Nigerians needed. It doesn't mean he's a good or a bad man. I just think it's what Nigerians need at this point in time, and that's based on personal uh, personal opinion. Okay. So I believe he will do well. You understand that I believe I don't have any doubt about that, but basically because uh, I have understanding as a child of God. But now let me move to the military beating of civilians. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, that's the Ministry of Defense, and that's a total military um, uh, environment. However, the the reason why we have civilians over the military personnel in that ministry, mm -hmm. the highest ranking officer in that ministry is a civilian. Okay, which is the Minister of Defense. The second highest ranking officer in that ministry is also a civilian, which is the Minister of State for Defense, Matawale, mm. former governor. Then the third highest ranking officer is a military personnel, which is the Chief of Defense Staff, the Four Star General. You understand? And then before you have the other service, uh, the other service uh, chiefs like the Army, Chief of Army Staff, Air Staff, mm. and Naval Staff. You also have before them, you also have the Permanent Secretary that ministry which is also a civilian mm. you understand so we are operating in a democratic setting and i still don't know why that the, the activities of the military are widely populated and widely spread publicly you see the military always want to be in the public eye doing one unnecessary thing or the other even giving aids out unnecessarily you want to give it out go to crisis prone area where there is authorization for military jobs such as Bruno, you do eye care program, do those things. It's in line with your uh, civil uh, relationship in the military. You yeah. can do all that in yes, a war torn area where you are in charge, like the police have handed over a flag to you in the northeast, you know. So they operate there. But uh, personally, I want to believe that the president will utilize today, being June 12, to begin to restrict uh, certain military activities. For example, I don't see the reason why. We have people on uni one or two military personnel on uniform driving with a, a young boy in a Lexus and all of that. Military? Uh, yes, we see them now. I don't see why we see occasionally you see a soldier wearing his camo in, in, a, in a Lexus or in a Benz driving with one young boy or the other. I don't want to go deep into the stories, but the point is, what's all that for? So I, I, I think there should be some level of uh, restraints for the military activity in Nigeria. Personally, that's what I think. Because I believe that uh, if we have these restraints, for example, in, 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 in those days in this same country, 
the soldier is wearing uniform on the street, police will arrest him. Police will just arrest the soldier. If they see you wearing uniform on the street as a soldier, they will just arrest you. That's because you have no business wearing uniform when you are not in an operation. You understand me? Mm. Yeah, you have no business walking on the street as an army man with a uniform when you are not on duty. You are a military man for God's sake. You are not here to mix with the public. That's why they make it compulsory for you to live in the barrack. Except when you come to visit your people. At such point, you're not even supposed to be fully kitted. You understand? Okay. But, but, but so you're now, saying that a military man appearing is a sign for something? Yes. It must be something when you see be. the military all over the world, it's mm. a serious situation. They don't just come out. You get that? So now, but now it's so rampant. You just see a military man on uniform in the market. See a military, you just see them. You know, military has so much discipline and those things are not part of it. And one thing I like about the military is the discipline. But now you see them like this, you see them, no. But, but that is because of the level of operational uh, hands that has been extended to them, which I don't think is normal and right. I, I think the president should utilize today being June 12th to begin to withdraw a lot of military operations. In the past administration of uh, President Buhari, we had, and I think we still have, in 36 states of the FCT, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we have in a democratic setting, in a democratic setting, we had in 34 states active military operations. Out of 36 states, we have active military operations, which means the military in these places were in forefront. This has led to several embarrassment and has reduced the military respect in the eyes of the public, especially in the south, south and in the southeast. Before, before, it's very difficult to hear that army was attacked. But now, people can wake up in Abba and attack soldiers. People can wake up in Delta and attack soldiers to the point of killing them. That thing is not normal. The soldiers had this high respect that when they come out, everything goes down. You know? But why are they now losing the respect gradually? Why are they not gradually becoming the SEC police too? Even an NCDC is still managing to maintain theirs. Do you know why? See finish. See finish. See finish. What till you go do again? That's the problem they are having. I think the military is contexting with the police and it's wrong. I, I think the military is trying to be the police and it's wrong. I think the military should refrain back to their official role, be in their barracks, come out for special operation, and the military should not do any special operation alone in a civilian and a democratic setting. They must be attached and headed by a police officer. They shouldn't even lead because they are just there to assist the police, mostly on invitation. So I think that they should begin to withdraw their involvement, to, especially in the South, South, everywhere in this country, they should withdraw their involvement and then, so that when they come out, we can take them serious. Because right now, we do not take the military as serious as we used to take them. And I want you to know that the strength of every nation is dependent on the strength of their military. Not mm. the strength of their police. The police is internal. The military is more of external. The military is what the foreign bodies mm. see and respect you. Just like the U.S. Army. Just US like the U.S. Army. But let me shock you. Do you know that there are soldiers in the U.S. who served all through their life in the military, the mandatory number of services, like in Nigeria, is about 35, mm. and they serve the equivalent of their mandatory service here as military officers in America, and they never fought or went for an internal operation within America. All their operations was outside of the country. In fact, major, over 70% over of American soldiers that have served in you, they will tell you they, don't have any, they have never had an operation internally in American soil, on the American soil rather. Mm. They have never. All their operation is go here, go here, outside America. That is the military. That's what the military is known for. You remember in those days how the Nigerian army liberated the Liberia? Mm. Do you remember Angola? You remember Syria alone? Do you remember how they contributed to liberating several other African countries Even still Somalia, today? Yes. Somali, the peace Somali have all thanks to Nigeria. You get that? Do you remember how Nigeria 
It's when Nigeria pulled out of South Sudan, that was when they could no longer hold it. When Nigeria, only Nigerians were able to stabilize Somalia, America lost so much life till they acted a movie about it. You understand me? That mm. movie was so popular. It's one of their favorite war movies of all time. They were, that's how much they lost. But the Nigerians went into Somalia, brought those things down. Why? We are so talented. But I am against military involvement in internal issues. I think that the military should maintain this their pride. Let's have this pride in them. Now it has gotten to the level of humiliating civilians aimed at helping your administrative procedure in your ministry. You understand me? That's to show you how much impetus they are now growing. Now that's a direct oppression on the civil society. Are they trying to inspire fear so that we will not be able to talk when we hear them? I don't think so. I think they are dragging for space. You understand In the me? wrong area, you know what it, I mean? You understand me? I think they are dragging for space. Because the truth is that a military personnel should know his level and should know his position, that he is the pride of the nation and that he is the hope of the nation when the worst comes to worst. That the nation is looking up to him and as such must carry himself like that. When he begins to come down, to let himself down to the point of not even just exchanging word, but beginning to use the training that was given to him by the taxpayers' money, by the civilians' money, he was trained, which means he is not supposed to fight a civilian because by his training, he is way above that civilian. And now he's utilizing the training trained him by the civilian taxpayers' funds. He's utilizing that training against the civilian. It's against every code of conduct. But mm -hmm. you understand me? Mm -hmm. I heard about the story. I don't know how true that is that the military, because they had an issue in a, yeah. a, a supermarket in Abuja and they shut down the supermarket. Yes. No, that no. is very wrong. Who gave the military the right to shut down? A, a, a supermarket in a democratic setting. It was according to the information by the powers that be, it may have got to that point. It was actually the police that uh, supported in that particular arena. No, not even. Even if the police support, the military should not show their face. Please, listen, see, even when a pilot died inside the Air Force, uh, this is our favorite female pilot, yes. yeah, so rest in peace. When she died inside the airport, uh, the Air Force barracks, you remember? Yes. When the Air Force arrested the person, in the barrack, who was the suspected uh, murderer? Mm. The person was handed over to the police. It's an Air Force personnel, but he was handed over to the police. Go to state CID of every state police. You will see military personnel, I mean, every Air Force dependent. They are ha on handcuff most times, brought for investigation. Because the police is the only organization that the federal government has best on that investigative authority with. Of course, we have the EFCC and other one of them, but they are all working on behalf of the police. That is why most of this organization, you find out they were started by the police. The DSS, the EFCC, they were all started by the police. Mm. So, the point I'm making is this. Like I talked about the bomb blast of the railway, bomb blast and kidnapping of some persons in the Cardinal Abuja Railway. The, the, the chief of army staff visited. The, the, the inspector general of police visited. <coughs> and and I, the chief of defense staff, I think, visited also. I said, no, it's not necessary. What's the chief of army staff doing there? If the chief of defense staff went there, what's it doing there? It's the only, is the IG that should visit. If you want to do anything for the IG or you, want, you feel you want to support the situation, you write to the IG. That's his job. If he said, okay, your men should come and work with my men, let's do this thing, they go. Not that you go there with press as chief of army staff, those things I don't think they are necessary. They are wrong. Not even necessary, they are wrong. What you should do is offer your support to the police. Let the police do their job. If those people have done anything bad, then there is need to close down that place. Let the police be at the forefront of the closing down of that place. Even when the soldiers are going for war, they must have police officers. Because when they conquer territories, it is the police officers that take note of the territories that has been conquered. You understand me? So, this, uh, we need to get our priorities straight because I feel one of the major causes of insecurity in Nigeria is the competition among the service the forces, the military, the police, and other forces. You, you meet an immigration officer, he, he wants to do his own, he want, don't want to, you understand me, you meet an army officer here, he wants to do his own, you meet a policeman, he wants to do his own. They are all fighting for superiority, they are all fighting for a role, whereas their roles are spelled out. So the greatest threat to our national security as Nigeria 
is the competition, the unhealthy competition of the police force, the service forces, and the military. Their competition is our greatest threat. Because while competing, they give the criminal and the terrorists and all those elements, those unscrupulous elements in the nation, to prosper banking on their competition, pushing each pitching them against each other, pitching them against each other. You understand me? In a country where the police should love the military because they are supposed to complement each other, it's the same country where a senior, a general, is supporting the military to attack a police formation because of one officer that was not on duty. I don't know if you are getting that, those yeah, rubbish. Something, something happened in Adamawa. The That's what I'm police telling you. station was attacked. That's what I'm telling you now. We thought it was terrorists, but it ended no, up being... No, it's military. How can you allow soldiers with trucks, everything, like they were going to war to attack a police station. That's to show you the level of rivalry. If a police officer maybe, for example, beat up a soldier, there are ways. You people have internal ways to go about it. If you want to arrest a police officer, if you want to arrest a soldier, they have internal procedure. Why not a general? You are not an illiterate. You are a very big boy if you retire going with soldiers. And then, with all your knowledge and trainings, you send your boys to go and attack a police station. That means that there is this competition and rivalry. And these things are unhealthy. Mm. So the greatest threat to our national security is not kidnappers, it's not terrorists, it's not uh, any group or form of group. No, it's not. It is the competition of our security agencies and forces. The unhealthy competition. Therefore, I tell you today, let the security forces, the military and the paramilitary, the police and all, let them complement each other and let whoever it is to take lead take the lead let others support when the need arise if we be, they are all working towards one goal but because they are coming with different roads the roads are too many and it's causing us problem in this country i am still saying our greatest threat is this unhealthy competition therefore i urge every one of them now by this june 12 message this is my own message as ambassador both in there i urge you all to sit down and rethink and you people should complement each other so that we can have peace. Then we know that the common enemy will not be the unscrupulous element. And then together, allowing who should lead to lead, we will not front them and pick them out bit by bit. And this country will be a wonderful, wonderful country. Okay. I wanted to add that thing that your guy normally do. My name is Ambassador Boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's my big boss idea. Yeah, thank yeah. So, thank you very much for your time and for sharing with us this particular piece. And we hope that he... Um, that this competition becomes um, a very good one, not a bad one, not a sour one. Yeah, we don't even need the competition, that's it. Yes. Next week, I'm, hopefully, we're going to be talking about uh, car snatching and some other stuff that is that we are noticing, not in River State, but in some other states of the Federation. Okay. And, and, and stuff like that. We're going to talk about how to do back. I'm going to be giving out tips on how to run a background check for domestic staffs and also link you up to people that can, if you can do that yourself. And, other forms of domestic activities, okay? Okay. So you can follow us on social media. My name is Ambassador Bosinde. I'm a security relations consultant. Okay, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at Bosinde Life. Bosinde Life is spelled B O S I N D E S B O S I N D E L I V E. Okay, and if you want to call us, we currently go out to speak to organizations. You, you can reach us. I'm trying to look for this lady's number. They always have me. <laughs> but you can call uh, 0813-707-9788. That's 0813-707-9788. That's Sophia's number. Uh, but we also have Eunice and her number. I, I, I've not gotten that upstairs yet. We also have uh, Mrs. Eunice. She also works with us. So, but when you reach out to her, everybody is a team. We come mm. speak to you as we have been doing, teaching you security, answering your security and police related questions, helping you navigate times like this. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Cheers for now. The news at 10 comes up next. You know, they see, but you know,